Welcome back. We're going to make a pretty Halloween card now. Happy Halloween card. And that's our third project. And then we'll do mystery stamping. Once we're done, I'm going to move the camera. Hold on for just a minute. going to move it up just a tiny bit. Sorry if that made you seasick. Hi, Lisa. Glad you're here with us this morning. I hope you're going to do mystery stamping. And Kim is back. Cassandra. Donna, I think I may have seen LaDonna also. So this paper, like I said, is really different than a lot of the Halloween paper that we've had in the past. I know at least it's been a couple years ago the Halloween paper was really cutesy, which is fun too, but this is very different. So this last project that I'm gonna demonstrate today, I'm calling the Pretty Happy Halloween card. So you could certainly, Dale was saying this could be like a 50th birthday card. That's a good idea. If people get to be that old, he said. He just turned 62 last month, y'all. <laughs> so I thought it was really fun to use the iridescent pearls on this. And this is a really easy card. Again, with just minimal supplies. But I thought it turned out really pretty. And of course, no naked envelopes. So if you have a piece of paper that's about 6 inches by 2 and a quarter, 2 and a half left over, be sure and put that on your envelope flap or like we've been decorating down the side of the, the front or even a strip across the back or the flap. You want to be sure and just do that. It makes it um, fun when someone goes to the mailbox to see a little sneak peek of what's inside. So we'll go ahead and get started on this project because I know y'all are really here for mystery stamping, right? Okay, so we're starting with a piece of basic black that is eight and a half by five and a half and it's scored at four and a quarter. So we'll get our crease burnished here. And then I have a piece of whisper white and you could certainly do some stamping on the inside if you want to. I just tend to not to because I write so big. And I know a lot of you do like to decorate or stamp on the inside, put an inside greeting. But this is five and a quarter by four. Just a little border on it. Another super easy project. I thought it turned out cute. And then I can never remember the eighth, so I'll have to look this up because I did just the sixteenth of an inch border just to kind of bring out the white in this die cut piece. I thought that I'll kind of show you the difference. So here it is just on the black, but when you put even that tiny border of white, it makes such a difference. It just pulls from that paper. So that's why I like to do that. So we have used quite a few of the patterns of the paper today, or gotten to show you quite a few. This one's really fun, it's kind of subtle. We'll get that lined up. dry for just a second and then here's that die cut which I think this is just so pretty with the curved sides and such a pretty floral paper so it is very versatile not just for Halloween I'm just adhering everything down today not popping anything up on this card which I know that's just not like me but sure, that's not a problem. <laughs> I know if you if you know me you know, I always say, if in doubt, pop it up. But this time, just adhere to everything down. So then I'm gonna use my grid paper. Let me get it kind of lined up here because that's how I put, do we still have those dies out, Dale? Did I put them up? Can we put them up? So here's that border die. 
and it's kind of hard to see, I know, but it's um, it's really pretty cut from the glitter paper. Get that piece of paper. So it's got just a really nice decorative piece. You wanna pull that die out for me right quick? Sure. We're just coming across with that piece. Yeah, the decorative edge. Yeah, so that's what this die does, is just gives you that little decorative piece. So I thought that was pretty and I wanted to be able to use it on a card. So we're just gonna put a little bit of glue across the top part of that. What time is this point? No, top finger up. No, I know, I, that's really weird. I don't know what I was thinking when I designed this card. That is just not like me. I have to keep y'all on your toes, right? So I'm going ahead and adhering this just to this layer because it's just a tiny bit wider than the layer. So that way we can go in and it's not much to trim off and it probably really would not have to be done if you don't want to. We'll just trim that little tiny bit off. And honestly, it probably would not even show on that black background. And then we're ready to go ahead and adhere this to the front. So see how simple this is? There's so many things too, like this would be really pretty with the Christmas paper to come in and use that kind of label die with a couple patterns of Christmas paper, one for the background, one for that label. I might have to do that and share one of those this week just to kind of show you the difference. That would actually be fun to make like Christmas treats and a Christmas card, just recreate everything with Christmas product. I might do that, we'll see. And then I already have our sentiment stamp, the Happy Halloween. That day I was working on stuff. For some reason, I did some stamping ahead of time. So we could pop this up, but we'll just sit here it down. That's what I did on everything else. And I just kind of put that across the top. Of that die cut piece. So easy. Y'all let me know what you think as usual. I love to hear your feedback. And did we craft the iridescent pearls? Yes. Let's go ahead and put those on. And I think I may use these smaller ones this time. at the end of the sentiment in the beginning. Like I said, these are really pretty and they pull the color that you're using as far as the paper and the cardstock. So these would be pretty on holiday cards, Christmas cards as well. Uh, Cassandra says LD would be willing to help you with the Christmas samples. Oh, she would? I bet she would. She's already doing a little work for me. She's awesome like that. No fussy cutting this time, guys. And then we're just decorating our card flap. So easy. Our envelope flap. That little piece of paper. And this, again, is a non-directional paper, which always makes it nice. You don't have to worry when you're adhering it on and you just to me you just get more out of those papers but a lot of this paper is not directional. I didn't do a very good job of lining that up y'all. 
it's okay though. It's not perfect, it's handmade, right? And then you just come in and snip around that flap. So does anybody else think this would make a good birthday card? It's kind of funny, the black roses, isn't it? Judy Cassandra, <laughs> a loving card. Oh good. It's so easy, y'all, but this paper, like I said, it's it's pretty. And it's just not um, the typical Halloween that we've had in the past, so. It would make a pretty birthday card. Well, Donna says it would make a sympathy card. Uh, yeah, it would make a pretty sympathy card. Okay, so that's how quick and easy that card was. I just really love the um, little accent piece. I think that's a lot of fun. I think that may be a little bit crooked, but y'all know I'm not perfect. Okay, so that is the last project that we're going to demonstrate. So I'll give you just a second to grab your mystery stamping supplies. Look, what? Donna Fenton says she feels like she's watching the old black and white. <laughs> yeah, um, I struggle if I'm doing a card challenge or sometimes I do swaps and the theme is monochromatic. And I always say I can't do monochromatic cards. And when I finished prepping this one the other day, they all said, you just made a monochromatic card. So I guess if you're not trying, it's a little bit easier. Okay, so go ahead and grab your mystery stamping supplies. I hope everybody's gonna participate. And we will grab the prize that we have for that. And then I also want to be sure and tell you guys that we do have a joining special right now, the grab, the get and go, I'm gonna call it grab and go, the get and go joining special. So if you have an order to place and it's close to $100, please think about joining our team and joining Stampin' Up. Uh, being a demonstrator can be really whatever you want it to be. You don't have to do classes, you don't have to do Facebook Lives, that type thing. You can if you want to and I can help people that want to do that, but you don't have to. You can just be a VIP shopper and you can see catalogs early and get your discount on your craft supplies, but Stampin' Up! has the Get and Go Starter Kit through the end of September. So you get um, a 16 card class and then two stamp sets and a package of the basic rhinestones free on top of your starter kit. So you still get to pick the $125 worth of product with free shipping, you just pay the tax. So it's a great deal anytime, but in September you get that little bonus. So I always like to tell people if your order is close to $100, might as well join and get the discount and do it that way. We have a lot of fun on our team. I know several of you that are here with us this morning are team members. We have a great team with challenges. We have a door prize each month for our team meeting. We do have challenges with prizes. People are so helpful and give you so much inspiration and so many ideas. So it's a fun group to be a part of and we would definitely welcome you in too. Okay, so I have some iridescent pearls and a cobweb embossing folder. And that will be the prize for our mystery stamping this month. So in order to be entered for that, you're just going to want to place a picture of your mystery stamping card in the mystery stamping thread. It has to be there. I've already posted that in a virtual swap post. So when you do your mystery stamping card, take a quick picture and pop it in on that thread and that will enter you for a chance to win this prize. And we will give that away Tuesday evening. So be sure and have your picture posted by 4 p.m. and I'll announce the winner at 6 p.m. All right, here we go with mystery stamping. You already got clue one and two. So we'll move on with clue number three, and that is to fold your card on your score line. 
So you should have your card base already cut and scored, and you're just going to fold that on the score line. And I'll give you about a minute to take care of that, and we'll go on to clue number four. And Dale is watching comments, so if you want to comment done, that'll help us out. Just a minute to hold your card base. You know I like to use a bone folder so you get a nice crisp crease. Okay, perfect. And then clue number four is if you're using a dark card base and you cut a piece for your inside panel, now is the time to go ahead and add that to the inside. So just adhere that inside layer. I always think that gives it such a finished look. And especially when it's a dark card base, it makes it so much easier for the person to read your message. And it's just a little bit of cardstock, right? Go ahead and adhere that inside layer and let us know when you're done with clue number four. And you're already going to have a Halloween card done when we finish Mystery Stamping. Let us know when you're done with clue four. Jerry's done. Okay, great. We'll wait for one more to let us know you're done. I don't want to rush you. Should have your card base folded and inside panel adhered. It's almost done. Okay. We'll move on to clue number five. So you should have another piece of cardstock that's going to be your layer on the outside of your card base. And I put that you could emboss that if you want to, if you have an embossing folder that coordinates with the products that you're using. So if you have not already embossed that layer, go ahead and do that. And if you did that ahead of time, you can go ahead and adhere that to the front of your card base. And that was optional. You don't have to emboss it, but hey. If you have an embossing folder that coordinates, go for it. That just adds a little bit more interest, a little bit more texture, a little pizzazz. So clue number five is to emboss that cardstock that is your outside layer, so it should be five and a quarter by four. And then adhere that, or if you just want to use a plain piece of cardstock, that's fine too. And let us know when you're done with clue number five. Okay. Wait just another second or two. And we'll move on to clue number six. You have two pieces of designer series paper and you're going to want to go ahead and here, adhere them to the front of your card base on top of that embossed layer or plain layer of cardstock. So adhere both pieces of designer series paper to your card front. And that is clue number six. So 
I don't recall the measurements that was in your mystery stamping. They're just a little bit, like one is um, like one and three quarters and the other one is two inches wide. So just adhere those on the front wherever you like them. And then let us know when you're done with clue number six. Clue six is adhering your designer series paper. You should have two pieces that coordinate, different pattern, but coordinate together. Anybody finished, Dale? Not yet. Okay. This card layout um, is an oldie but goodie. And my original card that this one is patterned after is probably my most pinned pin on Pinterest. Oh, that's just your card. Okay. I tell Dale this card has come back to haunt me. <laughs> This is a Halloween card that gets pinned all year long. Okay, let's move on to clue number seven. We're going to punch or die cut our moon from that yellow cardstock that you have. And really, I think any size, like two, two and a quarter, two and a half, circle is fine. Pretty good size circle. And then once you have punched or die cut your circle, ink your edges with a little bit darker yellow or orange ink. Use a sponge dauber or a sponge just to give that moon a little bit more color. That's clue number seven to punch or cut, die cut your moon. A big circle and then ink the edges. And you may wanna add a little bit of color to the center also. I find that when I'm using a sponge, like when I'm adding color to the, the moon, it just gives it a better texture than the sponge dauber, but either one will work. And I really like the Crush Curry Moon with the Cajun Craze inking. That's worked out really well. So just let us know when you have clue number seven done. And you have your moon ready. That may take a minute. But it's worth it. It's worth adding that ink, I think. Okay. We're just clipping right along this morning on mystery stamping. Just a little bit longer for clue number seven. Okay. So once you've finished your moon, clue number eight is to stamp your sentiment on your moon. So if you have a sentiment that will fit on your moon, go ahead and do that now. If not, you could always add your sentiment later with a little strip banner or something like that. 
But if you're, the sentiment that you grabbed will work on your moon, go ahead and stamp it now. And then you'll want to add your moon to your card front. So clue number eight is to stamp your sentiment. And here comes another train. They've just gone back and forth today, y'all. They knew it was stamp class. So stamp your sentiment on your moon and then add it to your card front. Sorry, I know that's loud. At least it's not the guy that lays on the horn from one end of town to the other. And just let us know when you're done with clue number eight. I did post a virtual swap thread as well so if you're crafting this weekend be sure and show us a picture of what you're making or if you recreate any of the projects that we demonstrated today we would love to see what you do I always love it when you share your creations and we can learn from you Donna says she feels special. You feel special? <laughs> you are special. <laughs> Y'all doing okay on clue eight? She says done. She's done? Okay, great. <clears throat> we'll wait just a little bit. And we'll move on to clue number nine, which is actually our final clue for this card. Tuesday. Okay. So clue number nine is to add an embellishment. And I think in your um, clue number two, I said you could do like a tree branch thought that would look really cool going across your moon if you have a cat punch or die if you have the bats an, an owl any of those would look really cute or you may have thought of something else that's um, Halloween-ish that you want to add and you wouldn't necessarily have to put it on your moon that's where I put mine but We'll give you just a minute to put whatever embellishment you chose, if you chose to put one. You don't even have to. So I'll give you just a little bit to do that, and then I will reveal our mystery stamping card. And I think what I'll do is try to find a picture of my original card, which it was from two or three years ago. And I want to say that it was a Happy Mail card. Some of you may recognize it, but I just recreated that card with these new supplies. So just let us know when you're done with clue number nine. And we'll reveal the card. And I love seeing the ones that you guys make when you post them in the mystery stamping thread. It's always interesting the way that people approach the project with basically the same supplies, the same measurements and stuff. I know we all use different papers, but it's just fun. Uh, Judy wants to know if she can add some sparkle or sparkly. Oh, absolutely. Like on your moon, is that what you mean, Judy? I think I did go in with Wink of Stella on a moon or two when I was working on stuff, just kind of around the edges. Yeah, definitely. 
If you have something sparkly you want to add, go for it. This mystery stamping is just a fun way to all still be able to stamp together in a virtual class, but also to really kind of show your own personality and your expression. Donna has finished hers. Awesome. I'm so excited to see them, y'all. I think it's always fun to add a little bit of uh, shimmer. I don't think I did on this moon, but... So here is my mystery stamping card. Super simple. We did use the cobweb embossing folder. It may not show up a lot on camera, but we used that. And then a couple of the other pieces of the designer series paper that you hadn't seen just yet. And I think it's so neat that Pretty Peacock can be a Halloween color. Pretty Peacock and Blackberry Bliss is kind of, to me, a little bit of a surprise in this paper. Now, I did add a bat on the inside, and I noticed just a minute ago that I put the glue dot on the glimmer paper side, so he's not shiny. He's just a regular bat. I accidentally did that, but it works. So you could certainly stamp on the inside if you wanted to, <clears throat> or add another little embellishment piece. But that is our mystery stamping card. Like I said, I'll try to find my original one. It just cracks me up because that pin gets saved so many times all year long. So don't forget to post your card. That'll enter you for a chance to win that prize. And those of you that have been here with us live know that you are entered for a chance to win a bolt of that beautiful metallic ribbon. It really is nice. And it's an inch and a half wide. I'm not sure if I told you that. It's so easy to work with. It's a lot of fun to work with. So anyone that put a comment on any of the three videos will be entered for a chance to win that. Oh, oh, so yeah. oh good. I love giving prizes away, y'all. It's fun. So I hope you enjoyed our Magic in This Night class. If you have any questions, let me know. And we will get to work on that PDF tutorial. It'll probably be later in the week before I have that ready, just with other things that I'm working on, getting stamp class ready to go, stamp, uh, stamp camp supplies ready to go. So y'all have a great day. Thanks for coming and spending a little time with us this morning. And I hope we have inspired you to get going on your Halloween projects and get those done a little bit early. And we will talk with you again soon. Thank you.